The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. As always, we like to come to you at this time. Ah! And of course, sometimes the best plans of mice and men do not work out. So that we have to try again and again until we succeed. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on today? Well, it's not a lot of volume. We are going into a three-day weekend also. Uh, we're off on Monday, just as a gentle reminder. Uh, no matter what we get, uh, everybody can only assume uh, that we've bought some uh, magic uh, uh, beans and the, the, the market's going straight to the sky. Just seems uh, that certainly the numbers we saw this morning at 813 imply maybe a rate hike of another half a percent next time. I think uh, if uh, if the uh, Fed president uh, wasn't going all wobbly in the knees, I think that chance would probably be 100 percent. But uh, since he's a, a little bit uh, folding like a five dollar suitcase, uh, the rates, the, at least the chance of higher rates went up a little bit. I think we've had r at least erased all the stupid uh, talk about cuts before the end of the year, unless we have some kind of miracle. Other things going on in the market, Charlie Munger uh, is out telling everybody to buy everything in China. Uh, for a guy that spends a lot of time talking about history, he doesn't really seem to uh, have that good a view on what happened in the uh, late 30s uh, for companies that were doing business with Hitler. But, uh, you know, you could probably make a case that, uh, well, uh, a count country that uh, is uh, pretty much promoting uh, organ harvesting, slavery, and a variety of other horrible things is probably not somebody you want to hitch your wagon to. He's telling you to go knee deep or full into it. Uh, my history with uh, listening to those guys from Berserk, uh, Berserk uh, Hathaway is probably do the opposite. As I like to say, you know what? Mm, probably the best thing is to, to not uh, listen to the big men of Wall Street uh, kind of the same thing as using your uh, soon-to-be ex-wife's attorney boyfriend uh, to handle the uh, the uh, divorce. You probably want somebody that's a little less uh, dispassionate out there. But, uh, you know, whether it was Warren or uh, Charlie Munger, um, you know, I didn't – I had been trading long full-time. And I remember everybody making a big deal of uh, the sick offense – and uh, bootlickers at uh, CNBC uh, for Buffett, uh, who praised him uh, as uh, some kind of deity. Uh, but he came on, and I mean, for two weeks, they said nothing about uh, how they sh you should be buying Coca-Cola, everything else. Uh, and then those uh, 10 Qs came out, and we found out he was selling it all along. Uh, that pretty much let me know everything that I needed to know around 2000. Uh, and that is that he will or they will say one thing and do the complete other. And also the people that are supposed to journalists uh, like um, those uh, guys at CNBC or Bloomberg, eh, they're not going to bring it up just like uh, now. I mean, we could have a little Chernobyl in, uh, in Ohio. And you probably find the media won't bring it up whatsoever. Anyway, 877-927-6648. Uh, email me at uh, path at tfnn.com. <laughs> the lost years. And, uh, oh, uh, put a message in the den. 
if you don't get to me on phone or uh, in eel mail. So we've got that. Again, uh, volume fairly light so far. We're certainly going up uh, into this weekend right now if it continues to hold. The only way I think it could hold, since 80% of the stocks uh, are closing lower over the last uh, 10 days, uh, we have just a handful of stocks. Uh, and I did want to show this because I was looking at it and I thought, wow, I mean, options are pointing down fairly strongly uh, in uh, – in Apple, maybe I should be taking a look at this, maybe for options for Friday. Uh, so the first thing I did is I wanted to go and look at my database of uh, stocks and, you know, just how bad shorting was in Apple. And as I said, this is a company that's got uh, $200 billion in cash. And I don't mean, you know, they could go sell some buildings or something and have the cash in six months. I mean, these guys have cash tomorrow uh, if they wanted to, well, maybe maybe two, three days. Maybe the, uh, maybe the Treasury Department wouldn't lie, let, them, uh, let them actually have bills. But, uh, you know, they could move ones and zeros around electronically at the banks and uh, have uh, a ton of cash. Anyway, I'm showing here just a short percentage of the last few days in Apple. Why well, I've also chastised folks for the same thing, uh, just a biblical level of shorting, though, in Tesla at about 40 percent. So we've had a handful of stocks out here that are just massively shorted. Now, they, of course, make up the majority of stocks in things like the NASDAQ and the S&P, since everything's weighted so highly. Uh, but uh, again, that's kind of one of those things. Uh, when the shorts quit shorting these big stocks, I think we're probably going to have a pretty wicked um, snapback, and that could happen at any time. Uh, all we need is the shorts to give up. They have not yet so far, at least from what I've seen. Uh, let's do a little history, and then we'll move on to charts. It's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 2005, that's a date in history if you live in Lutz, the now ubiquitous video sharing site YouTube is launched. Few websites have had such an immediate impact on our uses, usage, uses, usage of the Internet. Less than two years after its launch, Google paid $1.65 billion to purchase it. Today, it only trails Facebook, Google, and Gmail. It's the most visited website in the world. Additionally, they created a new marketplace for words for you and Tube. But uh, I do digress. And of course, the, one of the founding partners uh, actually running Google now, the that part of uh, the alphabet uh, world. But uh, you know what? Don't think a whole lot about the uh, people. And uh, eh, I think they're going to probably get a bit of congressional pounding on the rear end um, eh, probably in the next couple of months. We'll be back in a minute. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? 
Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. And as we uh, get back, we'll uh, get on to some of the stuff. I had some questions about Boeing and what I thought uh, was going. And, of course, as always, uh, it's Boeing or I'm not going. That's what they used to say. Uh, those death trap uh, Airbus stocks of, the, uh, of those planes of the 80s, maybe not so good. Much better now. Uh, but uh, what's going on with uh, Boeing? Well, you know, you had a big move yesterday. Everybody's uh, kind of jumping up and down about the big sales to India. But really... That's been rumored since uh, back at about 190 bucks. Um, but uh, as far as what's going on, uh, you got a few things that are interesting. Uh, Boeing again, the biggest problem these guys have is not probably making stuff, although the supply lines are a little stretched. Uh, it's more about regulatory issues and pilots. Will there be enough pilots so that they don't turn these things into lawn darts, uh, pilots with experience? And uh, that's problematic. Um, the current um, um, appointee for the FAA, who I don't think has been... Uh, confirmed yet, uh, I think has uh, at least three or four, maybe five um, investigations going on uh, criminally in California and uh, maybe another five or six uh, from the FBI. Uh, but that is uh, who they're putting in. And of course, he has zero experience uh, in aviation. So, you know, mm, we just have to just have to live with the fact that many of these people are just a bunch of empty suits with their uh, hats out collecting graft. Um, how could you not? How could you appoint somebody that was that massively corrupt? Don't know. Uh, and it's certainly somebody who knows nothing about uh, how e airplanes even fly, but I do digress. Um, this is not, uh, it's not a world that makes a lot of sense. I guess that's the way I'd say it. So what do we have going on? Um, 
I think there, you know, there's just so many. You can't turn the spigot on or off that quickly. Of course, we saw that uh, at the beginning of the uh, COVID pandemic. And, you know, they've gotten back to work. But, um, you know, there's a lot of different people in the supply line from the people that make uh, the um, fuselages like uh, Spirit Airlines. Uh, the people actually make the jet engines, uh, which is a thing from uh, GE and all that stuff. I, I'm trying to remember, but I think it was uh, in a, a average plane these days, there's somewhere around 105, uh, 150 million. Is it 1.5? Yeah, it's 1.5 uh, million uh, different parts or assemblies that go into a plane. So there's a little bit of uh, logistics going in to make sure all that stuff not only uh, gets there, but is put together correctly. And, of course, uh, they've had a, a few little snafus along the way. But uh, if anybody that does know aviation been around for a little while, uh, just about everything we learn in that business is written in blood. They call it tombstone learning um, around the FAA because, you know, you got the National Trash, uh, Transportation Safety Board who can make uh, suggestions, but the FAA has to actually implement them. And being a uh, kind of a political organization sometimes, eh, Maybe it's just better a suggestion. Doesn't matter whether anybody gets killed or not. Depends on whether or not uh, it is politically expedient. But uh, I think the problem they have now is can it get any better? Are they going to be able to make more planes? And I think the consensus is it gets good. It's just not going to probably get any better. And, of course, uh, Airbus had about a similar amount of airplanes ordered by India. I think the total order is over $80 billion uh, over the next 10 years. So there are a lot out there. Give me a call or uh, email me and uh, we'll talk about your particular stock. Uh, but that's for Joe who wants to know what else is going on. Almost all of this that we've now heard has been out there since uh, the early uh, 190s back here around the first of the year. <sighs> It's hard to keep a secret when you've got $80 billion worth of parts to order, uh, and you have to ask people whether they can do it. Uh, as we uh, highlighted at the beginning, um, we've got stocks that are either massively shorted uh, and that have massive amounts of cash, so they can easily go run you out of the market. And that's with Apple. Uh, even though that uh, their earnings was... Uh, I'm going to say extremely poor doesn't mean that these guys can't come back and buy their own shares and prop up the stock for a while. In fact, if you want to be uh, the uh, the bell of the ball on Wall Street, um, your job is not so much to uh, to uh, make sure everybody is happy with your product, although that does not hurt. It's more important to make sure that they have confidence in your stock price and they don't go to selling. Because then that becomes much, much uh, more problematic for you. But we don't have a lot of volume since uh, what we found out about Apple. Uh, it was pretty, the argument's pretty ridiculous um, about uh, why they didn't make their earnings and whether or not that's going to go into the second quarter. But uh, eh, they can drag out those stocks for a while. And if you have a willing CEO, and CFO, they can buy their own shares back. That can last for an incredibly long time. I mean, what, Cisco's been doing it for, what, 20 years? I remember when Cisco had a share of stock for every man, woman, and child, and dog on the planet. And uh, they've just slowly taken their cash and bought those shares back over time. Uh, returning value to the shareholder uh, doesn't mean that they're making more money. just means that there are less shares and uh, less to hand around. makes them more, more valuable. But uh, many stocks have decided to go the way of Cisco. A lot of them say they're going to buy out shares. Uh, Cisco is one that actually had and did. 
Uh, other stocks up there, let's take a quick look uh, for Tesla and see how much higher this thing can go on the backs of those people that continually short this. You had a couple of days uh, that were uh, a day and a half that were under the three by three. You pop back up here today, there isn't much volume. Uh, you are going through the previous high of the 9th on February that had 215 million shares, you got 136 million shares here today. So you're probably running out of gas, but at the same time, no one's quit shorting this thing. Um, it can go sideways for quite a long time uh, as long as people continue to massively short a handful of these big stocks. We shall return like Pat. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And as we come back, uh, a question about what's going on in Salesforce. Somebody sent me a videotape of uh, uh, somebody. I don't even know who this guy is, although I know his face from uh, occasionally uh, tuning into CNBC. They call him Farmer Jim. I don't know why. I don't pay that much attention to it. Um, but it wasn't interesting. Normally, people send me that stuff. And there isn't much to talk about it. But I did find it interesting mostly because uh, he was a little bit honest about what he did, which is that he made some money. He probably shouldn't have. He's not going to pat himself on the back too much because uh, he did something wrong and made money, which happens. You can do the right thing and not make money in the market. 
Uh, but uh, he said, you know what, uh, eh, 30 to 1 uh, for a P.E. going forward, uh, that's enough for me. And, you know, on any of these stocks, you're going to get a bounce to some level. But, uh, you know, you if you, you got to know what you're doing and not take away the wrong message. And I think that, uh, you know, you make 20 percent on your money fairly quickly, especially from some of these bigger hedge fund guys. I don't know what this guy does. I just see them. I don't pay much attention to any of them. Uh, but uh, occasionally you get a little bit of truth out of these folks. And probably the best truth is to make sure that uh, when you do something stupid and you make money out of it, you shouldn't reward yourself too much. You should probably just say, thank God uh, I didn't crash the plane and kill all of my hundreds of passengers uh, and learn from it. But uh, you want to stick to your knitting. Most of us uh, here at TFNN or anybody that's been around for a while has paid a lot of money to learn their own system and to actually try to learn somebody else's system or do something else after you've learned how to make money uh, consistently over a long period of time, eh, probably best not to upset if you've got something that works. 877-927-66. Okay, um, Dave, you, uh, you spoke about dark pool volume being reported late. Uh, do you mean just after the close of the market? It can be, but here's what happens. You're supposed to, if it's in the dark pool, uh, there is a regulation somewhere that you're supposed to report it within that minute. But it's one of those things where it's more of a, uh, what, what do you call it? I'm trying to remember out here. Uh, more of a suggestion. The code is more what you call guidelines, the actual rules. Yeah, it's more... More of a guideline than actual rules. Well, apparently no one's been fined with it, and I don't even know if there is a fine for doing it, although they continually ask people. I've seen uh, sales as, uh, law as late as 15 minutes show up or hear about them later. Uh, occasionally people will, at uh, FINRA or some of the other folks, uh, will actually sue the folks for something else uh, because they don't do it. But I don't know if there's any kind of real regulation that puts any teeth in it um, and that's where I'm going to say that occasionally at the especially around the close you'll see a bunch of volume show up uh, maybe at like 415 stuff like that so just be be noticed that in the dark pool part of uh, that, that there is uh, some issues and of course um, I do have that in uh, each edition of the uh, Path of Least Resistance. What am I looking at here? Oh, that's what I wanted to bring up. We'll bring it, if I can move it. There we go. And we'll zoom in on it. But, uh, you know, your dark pool numbers have been, for the last three years, four years, uh, averaging around 35%. Maybe on a low day, 34%. Um, yesterday, it was 30.8%. Uh, so we've been going on a while. In fact, it was it started about the 11th of, uh, of January. Uh, and, you know, you had some times where this thing tried to bounce. Uh, got as low as just a little under 30% on the day. Um, this is a, you know, you don't find that irregularly. Uh, and that would say that uh, people are not buying and selling that extra volume in the dark pool. And we don't have that much volume either. I mean, even yesterday, um, you had about uh, 10.9 billion shares. You need about 15 to 18 to bust through these highs and probably make it stick. Sometimes you can just go sideways long enough that you chew through the top, but generally on tops, you wanna, really want to break through and uh, have a nice pop. Uh, by the way, tomorrow uh, we'll have uh, Tim Ward on the line. So make sure that you have any questions. Get them to me today or tomorrow morning. And we'll put them on for Tim. Um, be very interesting to think what he thinks now about gold. I was looking maybe for another day out here to find some kind of low. 
Um, let's see what we're doing here. GLD. Oh, on uh, Salesforce. Looks like distribution to me, by the way. Um, GDX, take a quick look. Hopefully, Frank, that answers your question about uh, Dark Pool's reporting volume. And see, do we have anything else going on? I know we got some more emails coming in here. Okay. Let's get down to here. Trash. Okay. Do, 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 do. Just some housekeeping here. Okay. Um, you filled this gap um, down. This gap uh, is back from the 4th of January. Went up on 34.3 million shares. Uh, into it today with 14. So you've pretty much cleaned that gap up. Um, you need a little bit more. But something's telling you a lie in this market. Is it? The is it gold? Uh, maybe it's the TLT. Is it telling you a lie? We've been looking for this to come back to 101. That's where this double gap uh, going back to a gap down on the 27th of December last year and then gapping back up on the 3rd of January this year has led this pretty nice double gap out here. My guess is that we are going to go back to that 101 level. Um, don't have a lot of volume now, but uh, the whole idea that uh, interest rates were going back to 3%, I think, was kind of a joke. Um, and I think the Fed is now kind of leaning on that. Uh, question to take a look at the dollar. So let's take a quick look at that. Okay. And we're talking about Forex. And we're talking about the DX on the Forex. So the dollar right now, 103, let's call it 97, or excuse me, 79, he did say. 103, 79, 103, 80. Let's call it 103, 80 and round up just a little bit. Um, you're back at uh, at least probably temporary support here on the dollar, but uh, man, up a good 80 cents off the lows of last night. So, I don't know. I think we're in this mid-100 range for a while in the dollar, as long as the Fed can continue those levers of power. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. And one of the tools that I have is I run a scan on how many of these stocks that are actually um, running more than 15 or 10 days, but 95% of these are beyond 15 days above the three by three. Uh, so we're way, way extended from usual moves. Doesn't mean you can't go more, but uh, I don't know how many I've got here. Probably... Three, four hundred, probably stocks that do have, uh, you know, 18 days, 20 days, 17 days, 20 days, 20 days, 32 days on Vivo. We got to look at that one. Uh, v I V O, V I V O. Don't know much about this one. Uh, it's getting bought out or something. So that makes a little bit more sense, a little tougher on some of the other ones. Uh, but we shall see. Did I close that? I don't think I closed it. Maybe I did. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll look at some others out here. Uh, Ralph. Ralph Malf wants to look at IBM. Pulled back at a disappointing earnings call. Almost no volume, which actually looks good. Um, I've read uh, my wrap-ups of uh, Financial Infotainment TV said that they've been out uh, pushing these as uh, fallen angels out here. I think IBM does have a good future in front of it. It's just had the same problem that everybody else has, and that is that uh, the cloud service business is down. And, of course, mostly from what they do at Red Hat, that's kind of uh, hitting them in particular. Of course, she went down on the 26th of January on earnings with 17.5 million shares. Almost all of that had to do with Red Hat. And all you've really done is go sideways here. Uh, and see. Okay, what else do we have? Take a look here. Um, Apple's options point lower, but of course that horrible amount of shorting has to be taken care of. Um, I don't know what else to say out here. You haven't had any volume going sideways. Almost this entire market tells me that we're at some level of distribution in the market. We're just waiting for uh, the rug pull. Uh, and it's hard to know what that last blade of straw is going to be that breaks the proverbial uh, back of the camel. But uh, a lot of stocks doing that. Let's go back here and look and see what else we have. Uh, one of the big losers of the day has been uh, Taiwan Semiconductor. It dropped the Chalupa today. Um, and uh, I don't know if there's anything else you can say about it other than that. We'll give it a loser horn. Uh, everybody kind of trying to ignore 
uh, to its level uh, that they can uh, of this move lower. And again, almost everybody just kind of looking the other way on that. Um, and of course, that's on uh, Berkshire Hathaway selling um, a bunch of its shares in that. Uh, other ones that they were pushing out here, AVTI, is it Activision? ATVI, right? If I could just spell it correctly. And I can, given enough attempts. Um, this one's actually looking much better, but just very low volume. But the, uh, the big guys, the whales getting out of those positions, sending them a little bit lower. Let's see what else here. We looked at Apple. Uh, question to look at UNG. You know, I haven't seen any pattern out here that really made me say that the low is in. Um, as I said, in gold, the thing is, if you come down and you run a bunch of money out, it's very tough to get a, some kind of V low uh, in a market. Uh, and, of course, uh, natural gas, while you've had some spits and spurts, uh, you've really done nothing but kind of go sideways since that $8 low, even though on a percentage basis it's pretty big. There just isn't much out here uh, today to say uh, that anything's changed in this. And, of course, you know, you can go sideways for a while. Maybe somebody's actually accumulating this, but there's no real sign out here that says, hey, it's time to line up because tomorrow that's going sky high. I mean, it could tomorrow could be in a week. Um, traditionally, very tough to get excited about natural gas this time of year. Normally, you're about a month away from it starting to get uh, uh, from it to actually be seasonally weak uh, for that. Uh, to, to Expedia had some earnings, I thought, and um, you know, blew up. It's kind of back filling that gap. This one would be a little bit more interesting to me. You gap down on the 10th of February with uh, a little less than 10 million shares, you're up to day on 2 million. Let's take a quick look and see what these guys have. Uh, for short selling numbers, uh, EXPE. Eh, eh, there's some decent. See what the monthly is. Only 1.4 days to cover. That looks a, a lot more interesting to me. You're one. You're back above the three by three displaced moving average. Let's see. This is kind of not a bad setup out here for. Shorts, and all I can hear is everybody telling me how everybody's back on the road, everybody's going everything, everybody's doing everything. Uh, this actually, the setup out here says that this could go back to the low of the uh, 29th of December, which is about 90, well, just a hair under 90 bucks out here. But you do have a nice setup. Uh, if you were to go down any time in the next few days and you start getting some volume, uh, this thing could race back down to 95 bucks. Um, just smacks of everybody getting way too long, way too soon. Um, anyway, let's go here. Uh, to, to, to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's just why you block, folks. Okay. Um, Amazon, kind of the same thing. Um, although this could go back up to 105. Maybe you get that. But I mean, you came down. You gap down, you're really just going sideways. Not a lot of juice uh, in Amazon. We'll be back in a minute.
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're back uh, sitting basically flat on the S&P cash, just a hair off the top, just a tad off the top on the NASDAQ. Again, um, volume has not been exciting. Been looking for something in the neighborhood of uh, 15 to 18 billion shares uh, in the total market uh, to get and break through these levels that we've been challenging for a while. So far today, uh, we'll just what a minute two minutes left here in the show we're sitting at about seven point let's call it 7.2 billion shares so about half uh with about an hour left to go in the day so let's say we do 10 million or 10 billion shares for the day on cboe it there just isn't there's a lot of people thinking the market goes higher a lot of people wanting to buy the dips, but no one's wanting to buy the breakout quite yet. We see uh, a lot of different stories out here. The dollar doing kind of one thing, the TLT going lower, the, the gold uh, kind of showing you that there aren't a lot of sellers down here, but no sign yet that it's ready to turn around quite yet. There's some daytime t uh, daily TD nines that show that maybe we're finding some lows in the uh, in the stocks the miners themselves but 
Again, nothing that really sticks out like the proverbial burning bush that I like as a signal in the market. So it's uh, as uh, although you a lot of stuff uh, buying and selling from uh, Warren Buffett probably shouldn't listen to too much. He does have some uh, good things, occasionally words of wisdom that are worth listening to. And that is uh, the market is a mechanism for handing money from impatient to patient people. Right now, I think it's going to take the patience of Job before we find a new market direction. So when you can, not when you have to, come back tomorrow. We've got Tim Ord on the line. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most